Pompano Scorti encounter. Hi, I'm here today with Nicholas. Hi, Nicholas. Hi. Uh, we're actually here in sunny Cyprus in the eastern Mediterranean, and we're in a city called Aya Napa, and we're being hosted in this absolutely beautiful location by a good friend of mine called Spiros, and the name of this complex is Christopher's Sandy Beach Suites. Um, so today with Nicholas we're going to talk about the state of the actual profession here in Cyprus and uh, I'm going to start off uh, by asking you to, to, can you tell me a little bit about your background Nicholas? Sure, sure. Um, so I was, I was born and raised uh, here in Cyprus uh, by uh, parents uh, that were both teachers prior to their retirement. Um, I remember as a kid um, being um, shy, um, uh, humble in many ways, uh, thoughtful, uh, analytical, um, and having this, um, this urge to do something impact, impactful and meaningful in life. Uh, and I guess that uh, dream of mine is uh, still full force and ongoing. I know you, I'm aware that you ended up in America. How right. did you actually end up in America? Right, right. Good question. Um, so uh, I've been passionate about uh, mathematics, numbers, statistics since I was very young. Uh, so I, I, I knew early on that I wanted to pursue a career that uh, embodied practical applications of mathematics and statistics. Uh, so I ended up uh, studying actuarial science at Georgia State University in Atlanta and then graduated in 2002. Um, uh, now what made me pick that school and eventually the America, the United States. Uh, when I was doing my research to choose my exact uh, major degree, uh, I had met an actuary um, that had gone to Georgia State University also. Uh, he was successful, influential, uh, and that truly, truly motiv motivated me to pick, uh, pick that school. Uh, and America. Uh, so it was one of those things I remember leaving the meeting with him uh, saying to myself I, I can be that guy I want to do what he does um, and uh, again to, to this day I remem remember him showing me in his office all his uh, books uh, from his university studies and um, the Society of Actuary e Examination Preparation Material all around his desk uh, at his office. So I guess that was inspiring to me in many ways. And that's how I ended up at Georgia State in America. That's, that's I mean, to have a great mentor like that and someone to inspire you is right. tremendous. So I right. uh, hope this guy is aware that he was able to do that <laughs> yeah. because of him we're sitting here today talking about right. the state right. of the actual profession here in Cyprus. Right. So um, you're in America, you worked in America, but you right. ended up coming back here to Cyprus. Right. So right. how did that come about? Yeah, yeah, thank you for asking. Um, um, it, it was not the easiest decision I had to make in my life path, uh, especially after two decades in a great country such as the United States. And, um, but in, in short, the, the main motivator uh, was my, my parents uh, getting old, starting to um, deal with some health issues and uh, re really made me feeling the need to be close to them. Uh, and uh, and uh, the fact that uh, I had a proposal to join a reputable global actuarial firm uh, uh, in Cyprus uh, helped seal seal that decision for me. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know where you work, and it is a very good company. And yeah. I'm, I'm in contact with a lot of people from your company, so right. uh, I, I agree with that. Now, there are many actual programs around the world. Right. Are there any here in Cyprus that you're aware of? Um, 
According to a, uh, a recent uh, conversation I had uh, with a local professor, um, th th there are no actuarial programs in Cyprus. Uh, I am aware of one individual that is teaching uh, a life contingencies course at the University of Cyprus. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, that's among the only ones. Um, uh, having said that, uh, I feel uh, from w what I see in the market and, and, and the young, young people and young students, uh, th there is certainly a lot of interest and it, it's, it's an opportunity worth uh, tapping into and exploring. Yeah. So, Nicholas, can you tell us about the similarities and differences um, in the actual profession between the US and Cyprus. Right, 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 absolutely. Um, so, um, uh, and again, this, this is my own point of view, okay. my, from, from my own experience. I would say that there are, there are significant differences. Um, um, the United States is a big market, uh, quite advanced, uh, offers tremendous opportunity in various levels and aspects of the profession, uh, credentialing, uh, continuous development, uh, compensation and benefits, and, and, and aspects like that. Uh, on the other hand, Cyprus is a, is a small country, uh, uh, the, the, the demand for fully credentialed actuaries is not quite as high, uh, but still, uh, I think uh, a driven, motivated, hard, hard-working individual can still prosper and grow uh, here, here on the island. Yeah, and I, I remember when I was at school in the UK, there was a lot of. Uh, students mm -hmm. from Cyprus and from Greece as well. Right. Um, so they didn't have any developed programs at the time. Right. Um, it, I, I'm not sure about Greece, but uh, maybe we could find somebody in Greece, but here in Cyprus it doesn't look like there is a program. Right. Um, other than this one life contingencies course that's yeah. being taught. And Correct. That, that, that would be uh, that'd be great for someone to set up a program. Um, I mean, uh, since I've been here, I've actually uh, spoken to people who are interested in the actual profession. Right. They're asking me, is there a program here? Is there a program here? We don't want to go overseas to study. Right. Um, right. Because look, look where they live. They don't want to give this up to exactly. go overseas. <laughs> exactly. I think this is going to be a big call for people from other countries to come here right. and study. Right. If we can get a program going. Absolutely. So, um, are most actuaries, uh, qualified actuaries in Cyprus, um, are they qualified with the British qualification or with the American qualification? Which are the two main qualifications? Yeah, uh, I, w I would say that most actuaries in Cyprus uh, um, uh, are qualified uh, with the, the British qualifications. Um, uh, it seems that the UK has been a more uh, favorable or even feasible destination for Cypriot students to um, uh, to choose uh, to, to, to study actuarial science. Uh, and again, having said that, uh, still, uh, both qualifications, both American and British qualifications are um, uh, equally recognized and accepted in, in the industry, in the local industry. Right, and I think that if we go back maybe 30 years, there was a lot more students going to America from Cyprus. Right. Um, but now, the ones that do go abroad tend to stay in Europe mm -hmm. and go to America. Uh, yes. From my own experience, from what I see. I was wondering, um, I have had like uh, other friends that have been working in Cyprus, around Cyprus, but even though they've been working in Cyprus, they've been working for Middle Eastern companies. Mm -hmm. So is Cyprus a hub for the Middle East? Ah, uh, uh, you know, Panos, uh, another good question. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, uh, Cyprus being, I guess, the southeastern outpost of, uh, of the European Union and a member of the Eurozone, uh, it, it, it has um, uh, developed um, 
as a, as an international business and trade center in a way, and offers this link between Europe and the Middle East. Uh, so, so it's not an exaggeration at all to think of it as a hub for the Middle East, Cyprus. Uh, plus, uh, I mean, let's be honest, it, it, it's a great place, um, uh, it offers a lot of advantages, is to do business, um, a conducive tax system with very low corporate tax rates, um, if I'm not mistaken, around to 50 or more and double tax treaties. Um, uh, a, a very selective and, and qualified um, labor force and manpower. Uh, so it, definitely a lot, a lot of advantages. So I really do think it is a hub for the Middle East and it will continue uh, playing that role in increasingly, I would say. Um, for the future. That's good to hear. I mean, um, I'd like to thank you for coming here and giving us the benefit of thank all you. your experience and knowledge. And I hope Cyprus does continue on this upward trend of being a hub and they hope they develop a program and like just remind the people that are, are watching this that this is where you guys can come. We actually have the best beaches in the world here. That's right. Um, and this is the first podcast we've done face to face, all the rest of them have been uh, via Zoom. Um, it's been great to have somebody live to speak to. Thank it changes the dynamic of it. We're Likewise. the great, great first person to do the live one with. And uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll include in the description Nicholas's uh, details. So if you want to contact Nicholas, we'll have some uh, in, in the description. We'll have some of his contact details. We'll also have the uh, in the description the contact details of this wonderful place that we're in. If you want to visit. No, it's far away for a lot of people, but it's a great destination. The best beaches in the world voted year in, year out um, that you can come to. This is your host, Panos Skordi, on the Panos Skordi Encounter. Take care wherever you are.